our big goal is to determine how do we actually do technical drawings or blueprints by hand instead of instead of doing the 3D modeling and the computer kind of drawing them out for us. Well, how do we actually go about doing this by hand? Because there are some tips and techniques and tricks and, and then I also want to go over the expectations with you in, in terms of um, related to that. And the reason why, why should we care about doing a, an accurate blueprint? Like why is, why is a thumbnail sketch or a large full page sketch, why is that not good enough? And the reason why is because your blueprint, your technical drawing, what you craft on that paper should be good enough that you can give it to somebody without and without them even talking to you they could build your product exactly as it's supposed to be without um, without them even asking any questions that's how good your blueprint should be or your technical drawing and if your technical drawing is that good that means that you have your product figured out very well because we we really want to when we can and when it makes sense we want to avoid going into the workshop or working and starting to cut wood if we don't have our product completely figured out ahead of time of course our, we'll run into issues when we start building. Maybe there's certain things that won't be quite what we figured when we made our technical drawing, but that's okay. We at least want to start with an awesome plan. So that's what this lesson is about is, well, how do we start with an awesome hand-drawn plan? So here are some things that you are going to need. You need graph paper. If you do not have graph paper, then you can just Google search, like these words here, print graph paper. There's all kinds of sites that just provide all kinds of different graph paper and you can set it up to however you want. A lot of them allow you to change the grid size. And, but anyway, just print out some graph paper. You need a ruler. Yes, a ruler. So it should have it should have inches on it. And in the United States with engineering kind of stuff, we use inches. You need a pencil with an eraser. Please do not use markers or colored pencil or something at least yet. Our blueprint is going to look like these three views. That's what we're shooting for is something that has these three views views. We don't need this view. This is called the isometric view. We're not, us for hand drawing, we're not going to worry about drawing a 3D kind of angled view. So if we look at our blue our blueprint rubric, if you notice here, uh, expect like high end expectations would be uh, high quality hand drawn. No improvements really could be made to improve the drawing. Without communicating with the designer, someone could take the blueprint and make the object exactly as the designer intended. So again, imagine you could give your blueprint to somebody and they could actually make your thing exactly how you want. And then in terms of this first section here, the object perfectly or nearly perfectly matches the intended design. Every single piece is shown and appropriately for each view. So we have at least three views. Your hand draw is going to have three views. You're going to have a side. Actually, front should be here. Front, top, and side view. And then if we look at this image here, this is the tricky part about hand drawing is representing each view Correctly. If you notice on the top, we have an, like a line here representing where this starts to angle down. So if we look at the top view, we can see that line right there. And then on the front view, we have this line here, which, which represents where this angle kind of stops. And then we just go straight up and look at where that line's up there. What's very crucial. And this is something that you need to be doing on your hand-drawn blueprints. It's all this stuff should line up. Notice, like this, this view, whatever you put in this lower left, that's what I recommend you put in your, as your first view. And it really should be the front view. But notice how this, the size here and the lines line up. Here's the back. Let's call this the back. We can see the line for the back. Now notice, and this is why we use graph paper, I can draw straight up. To help me out, I could use a ruler. I could do some like dash lines to then line up the back on the top view. So notice the backs line up. Now notice that front corner, that front edge, this starts to angle down and that's represented with a line here. Now notice what we'd want to do is these outside lines we'd want to draw a little bit darker than this kind of like line representing the angle because that line representing the angle is not as crucial or as important or it doesn't stand out as much as say the border the outline but anyway no, now notice how that lines up that's the beauty of graph paper is you can just line all this stuff up notice this line here the very front the front lines up with the front on this side view and then on the front view again this we got this line that lines up and then the height the height is proportional meaning it's it's accurate or it's the same look at 
uh, top here, top there, and so on. So I hope that you can visualize this. And again, the big tips I have for you, one big tip, draw your side view, or your um, what should be the front view, put the front, front view here first, the most important view here first, and then give yourself some guidelines. So what I would actually do if I was drawing this on paper is I'd use my pencil and I'd lightly make some dashed lines to represent where this is going to go. And then I just erase those later. So that's a tip for you. Uh, before we even start drawing, you have to determine your scale. So what size, like, you're going to shrink it to fit on the paper. You're, most likely your project in real life is bigger than your pieces of paper. So we have to shrink it down. We don't want to shrink it where we squish it, like, let's say this way, and then it's still really tall. Like, no, we want to shrink it in all, in the vertical and the horizontal, proportionally. We don't want to stretch out an image. I'm sure you've seen where people try to enlarge or shrink images and then like people's faces look kind of squished. Like we don't want to do that with your project. We want it to maintain its proper ratio. A good place to kind of think about or start is let's say if your project is maybe 12 to 20 inches overall, like different sides kind of within that range. Maybe that each inch in real life represents one square on your graph paper. That's, that's one way you can do it. But So it depends on your project. I can't choose this for you automatically. Like I can help you calculate it, but I can't choose this for you. You have to think this through. So if your project is huge, let's say you're making something the size of a car, well then you're probably gonna do like one inch in real life, or like uh, one square represents maybe like six, six inches in real life or something. Or if your project's really small, maybe one square represents half an inch. But anyway, for most of the projects we'll be doing, this kind of is a good place to start where one square represents one inch. I already kind of mentioned this a little bit with some of our drawing maybe dash lines or guidelines. Just essentially everything you're drawing, draw it lightly first. You might draw a view and realize you're running out of space. And like there's ways of solving that. You could erase the whole thing or you could just tape some pieces of the paper together and make your paper bigger. But there's, there's ways to solve that. But anyway, my big tip, one of the big tips here. Draw lightly first with pencil, and then if you make some mistakes, if they're easy to erase, it's no big deal. And then once you're kind of done with it, then go over the important lines really nice and dark. I kind of mentioned this a little bit, but decide, do you want to fit all your views on one page? Or does it make sense for you and just easier for you if you want to do it on multiple pages? But again, if you're using multiple pages, it might be tougher to kind of keep that aspect ratio the same. This one's set up a little bit more proper for us. For here, in the bottom left corner, we have our front view. That's what we want to be doing. And then to the, to the right of that, we have the side view. And then above the front view, we have our top view. That's more so how we want to set up. So now, I'm going to, I want you to pause here and just kind of explore, look at these numbers, and kind of do some math and make sure this, this adds up. Try and understand this image before I talk about it. The reason why this is a good image for us to think about is because What's very important in your technical drawing are your dimensions. Your dimensions need to add up and make sense. We, in class, we practice some calculating piece size practice where it's like if we had a 10 inch box, the thickness plus the piece plus the thickness, we kind of add those up, that would have to equal 10. Now, if you notice this, this line here, how long is this line? So this line is 30 inches long, or let's whatever the unit is, 30. And we can see that right here, that's showing 30. Now notice, this front plus, or this, this is called the front. So I should say this side plus this side, this face plus this face has to equal what? This face plus this face has to equal 30 because it goes all the way. And if you notice on this right side view, we can see that this face is 18, and then this face is 12. So 12 plus 18, of course, is 30. Now notice this face, they're showing it is 5 inches tall, and then that carries on over here, of course. So I just, what I, what I want you, the point of this is, again, thinking about that your dimensions and your numbers need to add up and make sense. So this is not a hand-drawn blueprint, of course. This is a computer-drafted one. This is just a student made this one. But there's still a couple things here I want to point out and just to help us understand in terms of us hand-drawing our blueprints. So let's take a look here. I'm going to zoom in. 
this is a tree it's like a tree shaped thing that holds on to colored pencils so here's kind of the big deal this is the big thing that we want to be able to do in middle school is we want to be able to calculate and determine the size of the pieces this piece here this is one front piece that's two inches wide and then we can see that this dash line represents the thickness of the piece behind it so this here is two inches this is the front view and then we go over here and then now this because if if this is two inches still because I think she made it a two inch square notice that we have a skinny piece between the front and back so right now we're looking at the front and then the dash line represents the side so here's now we can see here's that side piece and then if we go on the top view hopefully you can see that even better this piece here this is the back that's two inches that way and then this one here this is the front that's two inches that way and then there's our side kind of skinnier side pieces behind so the trick for you as a designer is you have to determine all these dimensions so if this is two inches this way this is two inches this way so this piece cannot be two inches this way because it's sandwiched between these two pieces so if this is a half inch thick and this is a half inch thick we take two total inches we subtract 0.5 plus 0.5 so that's one two minus one is one that means that this piece must be one inch this way that's the kind of stuff that we need to see on your hand-drawn blueprints is dimensions showing the size of each of these parts and I think oh I think she missed those dimensions on here so those dimensions are oh she's got it right there okay so that dimension is right there and notice how she shows the thickness of the pieces so that's crucial for your blueprint as well like you got to show a dimension showing the thickness of your of your pieces let's take a look at some other aspects of this here notice we have a parts list and that parts list we want to say what's the quantity of every part what's the um description kind of like the part name just really for for us we just need the on your hand-drawn blueprint what's the quantity and the part name notice on the top view how this square base on the top view well it just looks like a square but on the side view we can see its thickness it just looks like a skinny rectangle we see that it's 0.5 inches thick so the improper thing to do would be to draw this as one solid well just one solid line no you have to draw it as a rectangle and then of course put our dimensions on it notice how the dimension line goes it lines up with the end and then we got our number with an arrow in there a lot of people are making box type th type things so if you look at this box here we got a hole in the top we got a there's a, like a clear piece of plexiglass on top of the box as well zoom in so we can see a couple things a little bit better and then notice again so what's super critical for you in your hand drawings to show you got thickness of the parts and like okay this I guess this would be the front is the front between the sides or does the front go over the side so for example this panel here is is over this panel this is critical for you to be determining your correct dimensions of every single part and there was a lesson that we did about this so now notice on this view we show that this panel this front panel is it's it's like between everything it's between the top it's between the bottom it's between the sides I know that because there's a hard line here it's not dashed but when I go to this view I can see that this panel is over the front and back this side panel is over the front and back because I have these dashed lines here again that's going to help me determine my dimensions so if this was a perfect cube then that would tell me that my front piece is going to be smaller than my side panel this rubric is is on canvas so you can check this out there's just a couple of things i'll point out on here so the front side top views are very important to, to have on our paper we need all three of those views we want to have good space in between them they they should line up like i showed in those first couple pictures all those kind of edges should line up purposely draw them to line up your hand-drawn technical drawing blueprint should have impressive neatness super straight crisp lines neat and consistent and actually use drawing tools so use a ruler for those straight lines and if you have like curved type stuff you might have to like 
find something in your house to trace as like if you need curved type lines. Use a proper scale. We don't want it too small. We don't want it too big on the paper. So use a proper scale and like that proportion and ratio should be correct. So again, um, if you're doing one inch in real life equals one square, that's fine. Just use that consistently then. Hidden lines are very important to use. We want to use that for stuff that's kind of behind in certain views. We don't want to miss any dimensions. In terms of rules of dimensions, we don't want to repeat any dimensions, but we also don't want to miss any. And it's better to put the dimensions outside the object. We don't really want to put them inside the object because then it can look sloppy and just kind of messy. Dimensions should be accurate. Those are the main things. It, again, it's going to take you probably a couple tries to get it exactly how you want it. Remember, this is a critical step in terms of you determining exactly how your pieces are going to go together and the exact sizes they're going to be. So we can have that correct before we actually start cutting stuff because we'd rather mess it up in our drawing than mess it up in the workshop, cutting wood and wasting material. So, all right, have fun.